Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to Rogue Trotting. My name is Derek, this is Mike, and today we're gonna talk to you about 11 different apps that can save you time, money, or both if you're visiting Copenhagen and wanna get around, go out to eat, and know what to do. Yeah, we've mentioned on our channel a number of times how much of a digital society Denmark has, so it's no surprise that there's a lot of apps that you can use to make your trip so much easier, and we're gonna go through 11 of them today so that you can have the best possible trip to Copenhagen. Yeah, now the first trip planning app that is really gonna help you out is the DOT Ticket app, or the DOT Billeta app. This is basically an app that you can use to buy your transit tickets, your city pass, or whatever you need to get around, and it can even suggest the best possible route for you to take. This is something that locals in Copenhagen use all the time, we use it ourselves, to get our tickets around town, and it's something that you can have so that you're not spending time waiting in line at a ticket machine after you get off your long flight to Copenhagen and just want to get to the center of the city and get to your hotel. Yeah, one of the nice things with it too is there's not a lot of ticket machines at the various bus stops around Copenhagen. Yeah. So if you are, are somewhere and you need to get a ticket, you can do it right on your phone with the app rather than having to scramble and even carry cash to use on the bus. It's just it's a lot easier to get around town that way. Another way that's easy to get around town is the app known as Reiseplanen. So it's a good partner of the DOT app. It's also the official timetable app used for the various forms of public transit across not just Copenhagen, but all of Denmark. So it gives you the schedules for the, the metro and the buses and the trains and even the inner city trains that go across all of Denmark. So this is one that we use every day. It's an easy one because it's much more up to date and accurate than say Google Maps is. It shows you exactly where the stop is. There can be some places that are confusing as far as which street corner you go on to for which bus is going to which place it gives you that level of detail and also if trains or buses or other pieces of transit are delayed it'll tell you what the newest timetable is as well so you can plan your time it's a really good app to use again we use it almost every day as we plan out various trips around Copenhagen and all of Denmark yeah exactly this is something that we use so you guys should use it too if you're planning your trip these apps are great because they're also in English so it's very friendly for somebody who's a tourist unlike some cities where they would only give you information in the local language you don't have to worry about translating from Danish to English it will do that for you another app you want to consider is called Vigo now we don't necessarily recommend that you take a cab or a taxi around Copenhagen because frankly there's no need to it's a very good public transportation system and things are pretty close it's also very easy to get around by foot or on bicycle but if you do want to take a cab because maybe you have a large group maybe you're traveling with elderly or very young uh, people in your party, or maybe you have a lot of luggage. I don't know why you might decide to take a cab, but maybe there's times where you just need to. Vigo is one that makes it very easy. It works almost like Uber, which is not available in Denmark. So if you already have Uber or another uh, ride share program on your phone, it's not gonna work in Denmark, but Vigo will, and that will be able to get you to order a taxi and have it show up wherever you are, and you'll pay for it on the app electronically, and it can make things a lot easier if you do have an instance where you do want to take a cab or a taxi. Yeah, but as we said, the best way to get around Copenhagen is like the locals do, which means you're going to do it by bike. And if you're staying at a hotel, you may be able to borrow bikes from them during the day, or maybe you'll go in and hire one for the time that you're in Copenhagen. But honestly, for us, the easiest way to get around by bike is by using an app known as Donkey Republic. Now, these are orange bikes that you'll see all over the city, and it's a ride-sharing program for bikes. So basically, the idea is once you have the app, you'll be able to uh, get, a, get a bike, use the app to unlock it, ride it to another destination, park it there, and you pay for the ride that you use. Or you can do day passes or multi-day passes, things like this. Honestly, we use Donkey Republic as well. There are some cases where maybe we don't want to use our personal bikes. So we're going to do maybe a one-way trip where we're going to meet some friends and then we may mingle elsewhere. Or we may be having some drinks and we don't want to drive back after some drinks as well. So we use Donkey Republic pretty regularly, I'd say, around town as well. It's an easy way to go. And the nice thing is that we've partnered with them to be able to have a discount code for you. So if you go on to the app and type in the discount code Robe Trotting, all one word, then you'll get 15% off on your rides. Yeah, Donkey Republic is a great way to get around. You definitely want to bike at least once when you're in Copenhagen. And I definitely agree. It can be nice to maybe try out biking with Donkey Republic. And then if you decide you want to get a one day pass or a two day pass with them, you can do that. And it will show you where the nearest bicycle is that you can rent, the big orange ones that you can find all over town. And it shows you where you can drop it off. So it makes it really easy to get around like a local. 
Another app that can help you get around and make your trip run much more smoothly is the CPH Airport app. Now, I don't know why other cities in the world don't have this with their airports. It's something that I almost can't live without and is a huge travel hack, but you'll want to download this app, especially in advance of your departure from Copenhagen. It's always sad to leave, but it can be even sadder if you find out too late that your flight is delayed or that there's a long line at security, and this app will solve all of that for you. It lets you know what the wait time is at security. It lets you know um, the status of every flight coming in and out of the airport that day. And it's just something that can save you a lot of time and help you with that planning to make sure that those last minute things are not gonna interfere with your trip out of Copenhagen as much as we hate to see you leave. Yeah, I like the app, especially when you're sitting in the airport. You don't have to worry about staring at all the screens around there. You can have it follow the specific flight you have and it'll give you a notification whenever it changes status so that you can know when you have to go to gate or when boarding begins. So we talked a lot about these apps that help you get around Copenhagen, but another way to get around is obviously with language. And this is where we definitely recommend the, a famous app that's used by us every single day, which is Google Translate. And it's funny, we've seen over the six years we've been in Denmark that it's gotten a lot better at how good it is at translating Danish and it's able to be very effective going between Danish and English and this is something that can be very helpful and although obviously Danes are known for high levels of English proficiency so you're not going to have a problem communicating with people in stores or restaurants or elsewhere but you may be in a place where there's a sign that's in Danish or maybe you want to see what the top story is in the newspapers and you can just take the Google Translate app and use even the camera function on it to scan what is being seen in front of you and it will translate it into English or whatever language you want to have. So so this is not necessarily a Copenhagen specific app, but it's certainly one that we use quite regularly and can really be helpful for you to kind of go one level beyond and see what's going on in Copenhagen and understand what's in Danish. Yeah, Google Translate, I know what you're thinking. Oh, groundbreaking, I've never heard of that, right? But it is definitely helpful and it's something that you'll use because the Danes make it very convenient for you by having good English when you're conversing with people around town but it's still their country, so they're going to put menus and other things in Danish in the local language. So Google Translate can help you with any of those very minor language barriers that you might experience in Denmark or in Copenhagen. Now you may have known about Google Translate, but an app that's a little bit more new and maybe new to you is called Thatch. And we highly recommend that you download Thatch. What it does is basically gives you a guide to Copenhagen or really any other city because it does have guides all around the globe that you can hold on to and keep in your pocket. With the Thatch app, you're able to look at different interactive maps and tips from creators like us. In fact, since we've been living in Copenhagen for six years, we've developed a number of favorite spots and recommendations that we put into a map that we made and you can download our guide to Copenhagen, how to do Copenhagen like a local, as well as some other guides that we've created. Now our local guide is free, so you can definitely download that, download Thatch and take a look at some of our best recommendations around town. And if you wanna look at our other guides or guides from other creators, we definitely recommend that you do that too, whether it's in Copenhagen or around the world. Yeah, that's a really cool app that's really new for us and we hope you guys enjoy it as well. Now, as you're looking at these different guides, obviously one of the things you're going to want to try are various restaurants and bars that are around Copenhagen. That's part of the fun of Copenhagen is tasting Copenhagen as well. And there's a number of apps that are out there so that you can find or book tables. There's ones that you may use to earn points from where you are back home and traveling through. Or, and one thing that you'll also find is in some of the more maybe informal spots around Copenhagen, table service isn't necessarily going to be with a live waiter, but you may sit down and there'll be a QR code that you scan and it will have you download a specific app that they use to be able to order food or drinks for, for that place. So that's something you may get used to and don't be surprised if you end up walking away from Copenhagen with three or four more apps just based on the places that you went to. But for restaurants, one that we highly recommend is an app called Early Bird. What's nice about Early Bird is it allows you to make reservations on the same day and it gives you two things. One, it will have a list of available reservation slots that you can go take for restaurants or say cocktail bars that are out there. And number two, it gives you a one third discount. So this is a way that you can enjoy some of the fantastic culinary traditions that are in Copenhagen. Try that new Nordic meal or try something that's a little bit different from what you have back home and you can get it for one third off. This is something that we use whenever we're looking for a nice meal out and we're being a little bit spontaneous. We wanna see what's out there, try something new and it's an easy way to try something and and be budget friendly getting that one third discount. 
Yeah, one restaurant that we love that's on there a lot is called Restaurant Mess, and it's New Nordic, and it's fantastic. You can do their three or five course tasting menu, and you're getting a third off of a Michelin-rated restaurant, which is pretty hard to do, especially in a city like Copenhagen, where those restaurants are gonna be a little bit pricey. So take that discount. We highly recommend that you download the Early Bird app. Okay, so we've talked about how to get around, what you're gonna eat, and interactive maps and guides. So let's talk about some of these specific things that you can do when you're in Copenhagen. One way that a lot of travelers save time and money is by getting the Copenhagen card. And we definitely recommend that you do that if you have a full itinerary and agenda for Copenhagen. It can save you money. It includes access to over 80 different attractions, museums, and different things that you'll want to do while you're in town. And the Copenhagen card also gives you a free uh, access to public transportation. So you can use the buses, the metro, the trains, the water taxi, all of it that is in the extensive transportation network of Copenhagen, you can use that for free, plus 80 different activities and attractions that you can get access to. What you can do is download the Copenhagen Card app, which makes things even more convenient if that was possible. Because what you can use it for is to start the clock and start the timer on that one day pass, two day pass, or three day pass, whatever you buy from the app. It makes it really easy to keep track of what you've done, how much money you've saved, and again, to start that app at the moment when you arrive in Copenhagen and start using public transportation, you're all taken care of. Another thing to mention is that if you're going to get the Copenhagen card, you can use the links in our description to do that. And it's a small way that you can support the channel at no extra cost to you. We'll earn a small commission from you buying your Copenhagen card through our links on our channel. And it's just a great way to support us. So if you like what you see and you want to do that, grab your Copenhagen card through the link in the description. Yeah, absolutely. We'd appreciate it if you did that. And something else that we know you'll appreciate if you come to Copenhagen is one of our favorite attractions, possibly in the entire world, which is Tivoli Gardens. And they have an app for that as well. Tivoli is going to be a place, especially in the tourist seasons, it might get packed with people. So it's good to have an idea and plan ahead. And the app helps you with that. It'll tell you all the opening hours for the, the day or the days that you may be here. It'll also give you an event schedule so that you can plan your day if you want to make sure that you see a certain show. Or maybe you're going to want to set yourself up so that you avoid maybe a big show that's going on in the main stage. And it'll be a good time for you and your family to go ahead and do some rides where the queues might be a little bit shorter. Also, it's a really nice app because it can give you an idea of the different food places, the different rides that are around there. It's a really nice tool that you have. We use it when we go to Tivoli as well. It's where our, our cards are stored. It's a good app to have to, to understand and plan out your time at Tivoli, which is definitely something you have to do in Copenhagen. Yeah, so if you have the, the Tivoli app, you can see, ooh, what time are the fireworks today? Maybe you're gonna wanna leave the park and come back for something. It just makes it really easy for you to plan out your day and plan out your time during Tivoli. Another thing that can help with that is an app we use called Get Your Guide. Now, Get Your Guide is a platform that you can use to book all kinds of tickets and events. So let's say you don't wanna do the Copenhagen car, but you'd rather kind of piecemeal, maybe you're slow traveling and just wanna do one or two activities a day then you can use Get Your Guide to book those activities. The great thing about Get Your Guide is that you get instant confirmation as soon as you book something, and it goes right to the app. So you're keeping track of all the things that you have coming up right on your phone. The other nice thing is that if you do need to cancel those things, you can do it up to 24 hours before they start. So with Get Your Guide, you can cancel for a full refund up to 24 hours before that event or that ticket time begins. This comes in handy, especially in a city like Copenhagen, where the weather changes often and you may have a forecast the week before your trip that is suddenly very different up to the day of the trip. So if you decide, oh, we need to do that canal tour on Friday now instead of on Thursday, it's no problem to just cancel that and book it and rebook it for Friday. And you can do that all with the Get Your Guide app. We love it. We use it in other cities. We use it when people come to visit us in Copenhagen, and we definitely recommend that you use it as well. All of these apps, we're going to have links in the description so that you can download them and get them before you come to visit Copenhagen. And again, with the weather, it's something that you'll want to navigate pretty carefully. A lot of tourists make that mistake and other mistakes that you can learn about in this video right here. We hope that you'll watch it and avoid these 10 tourist mistakes that are very common and we see all the time in Copenhagen. Thanks for watching everybody. Enjoy your trip. Bye. Bye.